Okay, assalamu alaikum. So we are live. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm Sana Rashid from Comics College and I have with me Ms. Ulu Jiyahya. And we have our students as well today in this fitness session. Shaz from Second Year Commerce and Suheba from Second Year Pre Engineering. How are you guys? I'm doing okay, great. So, so let me introduce our today's guest, Mr. Shoaib Jamal. He's a UK certified martial artist and a manual therapist. Welcome Hello. to the session, sir. Hello. Welcome to the session, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Shaz has a lot of questions, like related to martial artists. Over to you, Shaz. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank you for your time, for being so gracious with it. So without further ado, the first question I'd like to ask you is, if you could tell us about your journey, how you got introduced to martial arts and then how you got into having an MMA career and then later on becoming a fitness instructor. If you could tell us a bit about your journey. Uh, um, it's, it's a, I'll start with, you know, thank you for having me. You know, it's a pleasure. Um, anytime that I can answer any questions or share my story, it's, it's, it's always a good thing. So I, you know, we always have these pulls in life. You always get attracted to something. And for me, it was always competition. It was always some sort of martial art. So I got hooked into martial arts at a very young age, but it, it all boiled down to the fact um, that I grew up in an environment where I didn't get much positive validation in my life. I had people around me. I used to get bullied. Um, I didn't get much validation at home from my parents. And whenever I was in an athletic environment, that's when I used to get validation. That's where I used to get praise. Um, and because deep down within me, I always liked the aspect of competition. You know, I felt like with martial arts, when you're competing against another person, there is no better feeling. So, yeah, I got hooked into martial arts at, um, I think, about eight years old, eight or nine years old. I went through a series of, like, various martial arts. I started with Taekwondo, then I went to Kyukushin, then I went to England, I started doing Muay Thai. From Muay Thai, I traveled to wrestling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, finally MMA. I always wanted to compete. Even when I um, started doing Kyukushin over here, I wanted to compete. Uh, I wanted to get that praise, that self-validation, you know? It's always good in life when someone comes up to you and tells you that you're good at something. And that meant a lot for me. Um, and apart from that, it's just human chess. It's, it's very stimulating for me to go against and it's like problem solving with very dire consequences. There is nothing, a lot of times people look at martial arts or competition side of things and they look at it as violence. This is not violence to me. This is problem solving at the highest level. The, 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 in the Can event I, of a mistake, I'm sorry, things I have would go on. Yeah, yes, sure. Shep, yeah. See, you, 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 too, you just a while you said that you did not get validation from your parents and from your friends and you were bullied as well. You seem to be a handsome man. Why were you bullied for? What were you bullied for? I actually, I was, uh, well, before I forget, thank you for the compliment. Now, I'm susceptible <laughs> to flat to just keep the compliment. Um, you know, it's, it's always the case with bullies. Um, they will make... When they see, because obviously I had a kind of an unstable relationship going on in my house. So I was a very shy, withdrawn kid. And with bullies, as you would know, because you're in that environment, you're in a college, you would see that bullies always pick on someone who's withdrawn, who is timid. And they would, they would prey on my timidness. They would actually make fun of my looks. Um, they would make fun of whatever they could find, whether it was my looks, the way I walked, the way I dressed, anything that they would pick up. So I was picked on a lot um, as a kid. And it continued to be that way. And, and you know what the worst thing was? That I used to get picked on by, my, well, by the people that I thought were my friends. I thought they were my friends. And I used to be in that environment. And because obviously they used to pick on me, then everyone else used to pick on me. Um, and I didn't know any better. So I kind of allowed that to happen. So until I discovered myself and I developed myself into the human being that I am. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I can't stand up for anything. You know, if, if I don't agree with someone, I will tell them straight up that I don't agree with a particular point. And martial arts has actually helped me in that way. It has actually shown me how to stand up to my, for myself. 
Um, so yeah, it was that. But yeah, so Before. from from martial arts, um, I the the journey from the MMA side of things, from competing, to going to the manual therapy side of things, the the way that it happened is because um, with a lot of things in life, I found my fix, a temporary fix, was working out, was exercising, and I was doing it too much. And like you always know, like you know that too much of anything is not good. So um, I got injured. I had to undergo some therapy sessions and whatnot. And every, any time that I went to someone and I paid them for a session, whether it be physiotherapy or whether it be manual therapy, I came back worse off. Like I was more unhappy before I went to see them. So I wanted to help myself and I wanted to help other people as well. I'm not going to lie. It was I wanted to learn manual therapy for myself so I can fix myself. And once I started doing that, I tried to help other people as well. So that's that's my link from MMA to manual therapy. And I still train every day and I still want to compete. I still have that drive. I still have that fire of competition. Within me. That still burns on my belly. <laughs> So we've got a lot of questions related to manual therapy and the therapies you're referring to. But I think uh, our student moderator shares has a lot of questions related to martial arts. So you uh, talk about martial arts first. I'll uh, ask uh, shares to uh, quote questions sure. towards related to that. And then we'll be talking about manual therapy. Yes, yes shares. shares. One of my yes. favorite topics. Shoot. My favorite topic. <laughs> OK, so uh, following up on your story, um, there are many kids who get bullied. and what do you think is the significance of learning martial arts for defending themselves and standing up for themselves, like you said, and from girls' point of view? Because it's not really common in our culture for girls to start learning martial arts and then competing as well. So what do you have to say about that? Well, competition is not always essential, uh, but learning it is. Um, there's this guy called Sun Tzu. You'd rather be a warrior, a soldier in a garden, then be a gardener in a war, right? So acquiring a set of skills that will help you throughout life, it's always brilliant. And the way that any kind of martial art, like, you know, the way they do it at the gym as well, we have programs for kids that do kickboxing, boxing and stuff like that for young ages, age groups. Um, they, they give you a sense of confidence. They make you realize that you're not as weak as you think you are. And for people who are really, and you know, on the flip side, it is also very good for bullies because with a lot of bullies, it's issues at home that they can't address. So it's, it's, it's actually a place where you learn your weaknesses and your strengths and you develop them. You realize that you're not, because I've noticed a lot, a lot because we live in a very sheltered life now. Everyone thinks that they are the best. They are the strongest. They can get away with anything in life. But that's not true. And when you come in a martial arts environment, you realize that firsthand because there are consequences to your actions. You learn discipline. You learn how to strengthen your body. You learn perseverance. Uh, all these things, all these attributes are strong. Attributes that lead to a strong individual and they also help because you're in that environment to extinguish the whole thing of bullying and judging someone and picking on someone. Or how okay, so, safe, uh, hang on, uh, Shaz, I'm sorry. Uh, how safe martial arts is for girls? Like, I want my, my, my daughter to enter martial art, but at the same time, I want her to stay unharmed. So is it really possible? Of course it's possible. So with, like everything in life, you have to find the right person to teach you. There are so many people around um, that do these online courses or a week course or, you know, a two weeks course. And they think that they're certified or they have they have enough knowledge and wisdom to teach these arts, but that's not really true. These things are taught to people and it takes a very long time for you to develop and understand the skill that you require to be able to do these things properly. So yeah, if you if you take your kid, if you send your your daughter to a good uh, a gym, a good facility, like we have over here at my gym, she will be she'll be healthy, she'll be strong. And inshallah, she'll be away from harm's way. All right, good. Yes, yes, you were asking something. Yeah. Okay. So, follow up on, following up on that, um, 
if someone wants to start martial arts, let's say a kid or a young teenager, which particular martial art would you recommend to develop as a base? Like most people think it's wrestling or jujitsu, but as a fellow striker, would you recommend striking over grappling? Well, it depends what your goals are. If you want to do MMA, there is nothing better than wrestling. I mean, wrestling is one of my favorite sports. And in England, the place that I go to where they do wrestling, they say, you know, wrestling puts hair on your chest. It makes a man out of you. Um, that doesn't mean that women don't do it. So it's just a saying. It doesn't actually happen. Okay. So, you know, we, we have programs for girls as well. And uh, don't worry, you're not going to get any more masculine. Um, but yeah, for me, if you're going to do MMA, wrestling is the best thing to do because it's the perfect base. You learn whether how to fight standing, you learn how to fight going down. But um, to each their own, some people don't like wrestling. Some people like boxing. Some people like kickboxing. So you need to find a facility where everything is done. Hmm. Okay. So talking about martial arts and the competition aspect of it, in Pakistan, there's not a lot of scope, to be honest. Like, there are not many people who have made a career out of it. What would you like to say about martial arts and its growing market in Pakistan and how we can, you know, accelerate it in a certain way? I mean, someone who has been involved in this for a very long time, it is a very tough environment to be in. And you need, like everything else in life, you need such a big support structure around you. You know, it's, it's one of those things, you always need a team. Regardless of whether it's martial arts or it's in life, you need these people around you that will help you, that will give you a gentle push to actually make you go forward. And that's what the problem is in Pakistan, where everyone is like, oh, you know, like we were talking about, you know, positive validation and me growing up. One of the things that I always used to stick in my head was that either if you if you were not an A plus student, you were not good at all. You were considered a loser. You were considered a failure. Right. So sometimes in, in, in martial arts and stuff like that, you have to come across losses in order to learn from them because you learn more from your losses. Yeah. Apart from that, the scope is actually getting better. There are loads of competition. There are loads of events coming where actually people can go and fight. The only issue is there's not enough people to teach them properly, which is why we are way far behind in terms of competition, in terms of technique, in terms of talent, in comparison to the rest of the world. It is a very cutthroat world to begin with anyway. You need a good manager. You need good people around you that are going to find you good training partners, that are going to find you good events so you can fight in those events and learn your skills, improve your skill set and make some money along the way. All right. So, Shes, because Miss Sana and Suheba, they have been, you know, a silent, uh, they have been silent participants in the con conversation. Yes. I would like you to don't engage want them, them as to get well. Bored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Eva and Sana, if you want to ask any questions related to manual therapy, you're more than welcome. Look, I have a question. Like, is there any difference between a physiotherapy and manual therapy, or are they both same? Well, um, manual therapy is where you use certain techniques. The, the only difference is the physiotherapist usually only entails working on certain exercises and assessments, whereas manual therapy, I'm working with breaking fascia and tissues. Uh, breaking fascia and relieving tension within the tissues. The technique that works for me, I incorporate some exercises along the with, uh, along with my sessions as well. So I kind of dive into that realm where some people will call it physiotherapy as well. So they're very similar, but just slight difference. Slight difference. And what about a massage therapy? Is it comes under this uh, yeah. manual therapy? massage therapy and physiotherapy and pain therapy are all the same. Yes. Yes. These things are all interrelated. These things are all kind of connected, right? Not massage therapy. Massage therapy is like, you know, you're relieving, you're making someone more relaxed and stuff like that. Manual therapy more works with like, you know, if there's pain. So in terms of pain management, if there's an injury in terms of managing the injury, in terms of relieving tension, in terms of relieving fashion, things like that, that's where manual therapy comes in. Whereas massage therapy, it's a very vague term because it, it branches out into so many different things. So I would relate manual therapy more towards the realm of physiotherapy uh, rather than massage therapy. Okay, so Heba, you have any questions? Yes. So Heba? Uh, Heba, wake up. Are the I techniques said. used 
I think her connection is not stable, no. Sana. Her connection. Yeah. So Eva, we can hear you now. Yes. Please go on. Yes. Uh, sir, I had a question that are manual therapy techniques different for different age groups? Well, it doesn't depend on the age. Um, it definitely depends on the person. There are different techniques used with um, the age, not, not the age of the person, but how much pain they're in. Because there might be someone who's very young and they are encompassing, like, encompassing a lot of pain let's say in their in the neck right so i will have to use a different technique in comparison to someone who's older but doesn't have that much pain in their neck does that make sense so it always depends on the person um ideally in my therapy and um, the way that i work with people i don't want them to be in too much pain so i will use different techniques to address the individual rather than what age they are in so it's the issue that's addressed and the individual that's addressed rather than the age group so that's all right. So, uh, can your manual therapy help teachers who, you know, during COVID days, we teachers, you know, had to sit in front of our computer screen for for hours and hours. So, uh, do you have any any manual therapy uh, uh, specifically for such teachers who are suffering from backache and neck pain and uh, shoulder so pain? The treatment that I do, especially with instrument associated tissue mobilization. Um, that only works in person, but there are loads of exercises that I have that help with mobility. So for, for example, if you've been sitting in front of a screen for far too long, there are certain exercises, there are certain stretches that you could do that will help with the mobility to feel you more, more, more relaxed. Because what happens is you're sitting in a posture which is not very natural for you. And when you sit in that over time and your body is not strong enough to hold you in a stable position, you develop a pain because you're tired your muscles become very tense. And if you don't relieve that tension, it just becomes worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then at one stage, you just start having spasms in your back or in your neck. All right. Yes, yes. I'll take over now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so you mentioned earlier that uh, there's a misconception about martial arts and MMA in particular that it's pretty violent. And Ms. Ruj also yeah. mentioned earlier that is it safe for us and is it safe for her daughter and her kids? Um, there is a fixed set of rules in MMA which we, with which we compete. For reference, we can use the fight in UFC 259, Peter Yan versus Aljamain Sterling. It ended with a disqualification. I think you saw that fight. Yeah. So yeah. there's a fixed set of rules. Can you emphasize on that? So like any controlled sport, like any controlled environment, there are a set of rules that you can abide by. This is not the jump. As a lot of people think, they just see someone punching another per person in the face and they're like, oh, there are no rules. These are barbaric savages, which unashamedly, I'm ad I, I admit that I, deep down, I am a savage, but I abide by the rules. So like any other sport, there are rules. There are things that you have to abide by. Um, and they are for protection of the athletes. So, for example, the fight that you're referring to, a guy need another guy when he was on the floor, which is not allowed. So all these rules are in place for competition. In terms of training, because it's a controlled environment, it's not like everyone comes in and it's like a free for all buffet of lunch boxes flying, fists hitting each other's head in the, you know, you're kicking someone in the face. It doesn't work like that. So when you come to a session, um, you learn techniques. You go through these complex exercises that show you how to use your own body. They develop coordination, they develop a balance, they develop strength. And they give you confidence because what better way of feeling confident than knowing that if something goes wrong, you know what your body is capable of. You know what you are capable of doing, You're capable of protecting yourself. Protecting yourself. Okay. So when you were young, when you were maybe my age or even younger, um, and you were a martial artist. So who was one fighter that you looked up to? And like, what can you tell us about your favorite fighter at so that time? Are you, are you asking as an individual or as an athlete? Your choice. You can answer in both ways. Well, because the, the answer is different. As an, as an athlete, um, I really look up to this athlete called, there's two of them actually. Um, one guy is called Cain Velasquez and the other guy is called 
George St. Pierre. So those okay. are the two guys that I really look up to. Um, similar kind of styles, but I really like Cain Velasquez because he's this absolute machine of a man. And GSP is this very controlled, smart individual, which which is the perfect definition of an athlete or a mixed martial artist. If you look how he talks, he's very eloquent. If you look how he is, he's very humble. If you look how he fights, he's very calculated. There's no going around punching people randomly in the head and all that stuff. It's very calm, collected, calculated. As um, it's not very surprising, but there are so many individuals. Um, obviously, it's that kind of sport that you need to be very mentally tough. We're all scarred to some extent, but there's so many people who rise above it. Um, the one person that comes to mind that I look up to um, who was very mentally strong was Muhammad Ali, actually. He, he, he went through so much, but he never let go of his dream, of his goal. And how can you not respect a man who will stand up for what he believes in regardless of the consequences? A lot of people look up to him because he's a, another Muslim. And they're like, oh, yeah, he's a Muslim and he's a fighter and he made big. And yeah, we love him because he's one of us. But if you look into him, how can you not respect a man who will go against a whole nation uh, defending what he believes in? And he left, he let his boxing career go down the drain and he went to prison for what he believed in. How can you not respect a man like that? It yeah. takes it takes big cajones to be like that. Can, can we talk a little about diet as well? I mean, what diet you suggest to those who are, see, who are, who are looking to enter martial art? To well, um, the diet that would apply to someone who's looking to enter to martial arts or someone who's living the normal life is not very different. You just control. So I have this big, like one of my pet peeves are that um, people have these fat diets. Someone's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm doing keto. I'm doing intermittent fasting. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing Atkinson. Rubbish. All right. He, all these all these phases come in come in and go out of fashion, all right? It's, it's, it's all rough. So the, the only thing that matters is calories in versus calories out. You eat more calories than you burn, you're going to gain weight. You eat less calories and you burn more, you're going to lose weight. It's very simple. So if your energy output requires you to eat more, you eat more. If it requires you to eat less, you eat less, all right? Obviously, you eat more green vegetables. Obviously, you eat less dairy, less meat. You eat more beans, you eat more mushrooms, you eat more green stuff, and just be healthy. Don't drink too many Pepsis. Don't have too many Karhais and Niharis. Uh, yes, Aruj, why did you make that face? Is that your thing? Are you one of those people that's like having Nihari every you day? Mean, you mean to say that the, the ones who are interested in martial art, they don't have to eat biryani and korma and desi foods like this? Well, these. they can eat it, but if you want to be lean and if you want to be fit, your body is, I mean, we're built in such ways that it's amazing, right? You can eat the most rubbish of diets and your body will still find a way to work. But it's not going to be optimum. For you mm. to be optimum, for your, if you want your car to run fast, you put high octane in it. So if you want your body to work well, why would you put Nihari in it? Why would you put Pepsi <laughs> in it? Right, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's the same analogy. It's it's same stuff. And and then people will go on and they'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna have keto and I'm gonna lose ton of weight and I'm gonna be healthy. And then six months later, where did the keto go? Nowhere. Yeah. True. Okay, but so I think, I think, I think, but I think yes, intermittent sir. fasting is effective. Intermittent fasting. Listen, yeah, the the only thing that I I don't like about the intermittent fasting thing is why. Why, why, why make your life more harder than it already is? Why not just eat a controlled amount and just go? Why do people have to invent all these things? You know, intermittent fasting, keto, Atkinson, juice diets, cleansing, detoxing. Why? See, there is why one not? thing. Inter intermittent fasting would allow you to eat whatever you feel like eating in that eight hours. Yeah, window. but you're going to be hungry I later on and it's going to be a week. There's going to be a weekend or a week where you're just going to make up for all of that. And you're not going to be able to sustain it for long periods because you're always hungry. You will feel hungry because you're not mm. eating for a long period of time. And then how long are you going to stay disciplined? When you go to someone's house and they're offering you biscuits, you're going to be like, all right, let me have one. All right, I'm hungry. I'll have two. 
Oh, I'm hungry. I'll have the whole pack. Yeah. So why not just portion control? Just make your life simple. We've got so many things. We live there a very high paced lifestyle, right? You've got so many things to work on. You've got so many things to do. As young kids, you've got you know places to go, people to see. As older people, you've got places to go and people to see, right? And you've got things to manage in the house and work in your studies or whatever, whatever. Why make life more complicated? Just yeah. do portion control. Just measure what you eat, make a plan, and stick with it. Make a routine where you when you work out every day. We actually so missed you... out. I mean, I'm 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 inventing a question myself. We actually <laughs> kind of missed out talking about you know how this all kind of um, gems in. But like working out is so important. It is so important. Like um, eating right is important, but working out is equally as important. Like little things. Did you know that? high intensity workouts will help you remember more stuff it helps your memory so if you work out um if you if you learn something and then you work out your brain will remember it faster and it will retain that information after you worked out as well later on there are so many you know being healthy being fit as young people it's good because you develop this engine you develop this strength would you, would you please explain on high intensity workout what do you mean by that can a woman like me indulge in high intensity workout <laughs> not straight away everyone's athletic base is very different so if you go to someone who is a half decent trainer he is not going to make you do crazy workouts straight away you build yourself slowly and gradually rome was not built in a day neither is your body so you develop your engine you develop your gas tank you develop your cardiovascular system you develop your muscular resistance and your strength and then you go to these crazy high intensity workouts that everyone is raving about all right but yes from yes. where do we from where do we need motivation for exercise yeah so everyone is different but if you have a goal in mind and you remind yourself of that goal regularly you will stay on the path if you want to get an a grade that's your goal if you remind yourself that this is what i need to do you do it just like for young kids i don't know what the latest gadget is i'm not that big on gadgets but let's say you've got the latest iphone coming out you will save up you will pester your parents because that's your goal as silly as it sounds that's a goal so you set yourself small goals and you achieve those goals and you set your goals so they easily achievable you don't set a task that is so hard that it will be achievable in a year's time you set yourself small weekly goals that you can easily achieve so you can get that fix so you can get that validation that keeps you on the path otherwise you have to be way more disciplined all right so uh, can we uh, now uh, engage uh, suheba in conversation suheba can you hear us you prepared a lot of questions related to manual therapy yes yes miss yes uh, sir i had a question yes yes i had a question that uh, when does one know connection problem uh, we can hear the connection problem yes yes we are okay, back okay back to the fun stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> fun fun stuff for you yes please <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you you mentioned Kane Velasquez and uh, a fellow AKA fighter, Habib Nurmagomedov, who just recently retired. He's been having rumors yeah. of fighting your idol, George St. Pierre. What do you have to think about that fight? I don't think that fight's gonna happen. But what if it happened? Who are you picking? GSP. Really? How do you yeah. think that's gonna play out? How do you think that's gonna play out? he he is much more well rounded as a fighter um than khabib khabib's pressure is immense and i love the way he fights and i love his cage control but i don't think he takes gsp down and if he takes him down i don't think he keeps him down whereas i know that gsp can take him down and he can strike with him as well okay so uh, the guy we're talking about khabib uh, for those of you who don't know I mean, he's it's, it's very hypothetical it can go the way other way as well <laughs> Khabib finishes exactly. him straight away. It's a fight. That's my pick, actually. I think Khabib finishes him. 
but talking about that okay. another fellow okay another fellow muslim actually who is considered an icon in our culture how significant do you think is that like a guy like that who is a good role model who carries himself properly as a martial artist how how do you think that impacts our market in pakistan and in india and all those countries where there are many muslim kids who can look up to amazing. him and follow him amazing i love the guy i love the guy he is amazing for the sport he is amazing for islam because he 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 depicts it in such a good way because you know we live in a time frame where people are always frowning on islam people are always trying to find negatives and then we've got an athlete who will bring it to light in mainstream and make it more acceptable it's amazing it's amazing for everyone it's amazing it's a beautiful thing it actually is i mean i i i i really like him as a person i really like him as a fighter he's an amazing individual he is so lucky to be in that position as well there are so many people who would long for it to be in a position where people look up to you where you can be a role model where you can make a true difference it is it is an amazing thing it's an amazing feeling okay so you test the topic of diet so uh, there's a concept of doing a big weight cut before your fights just a day before your fights yeah. so you have weights and you have to cut a lot of yeah. weight which is not exactly yeah. your body fat it's the water weight that you have to cut out What is yeah. your take on that? Yeah. What do you think? How much weight should the fighters actually cut? And I I weight? do not I do not cut more than four to five kilos in a day. Um, that being because I don't want to be that dehydrated, because your body puts the weight back on, but your brain doesn't. And I wanna I like being healthy. I like being active. So I don't like cuts. I know people in my gym that I used to train in England where they cut more than ten kilos in the last week of the fight. This does not give you any ideas, ladies. Don't think you can lo- drop ten kilos in a week and be healthy. That's a completely different you thing. <laughs> Before okay. I can so already I, see I, the twinkle in your eyes. Before Uruj and Sana start saying, "How do we lose ten kilos?" Can we tell our audience? No. I tried losing weight a number of times, but every time I failed, unfortunately. Anyway, come, see, come, I come to a... the gym. Come to the gym. There's so many trainers. They'll they'll definitely help you achieve your goal. There's this trainer okay. called Salim. He's, he's quite good. He usually is in the mornings, so you should come try to get a session with him. He's pretty good at the gym. I might. I have I have a, a serious question for you. See, in the beginning of the conversation, you talked about your bitter experiences, which made you find your niche in life. So, what about the yes. ones who who do not have any bitter experiences in life? How would you motivate them to uh, come towards martial art? to become a it martial artist you mental resolve that's the most important thing it humbles you we are living around a society where everyone thinks you keep, you know i don't i don't i mean we we have had a very light hearted and a good discussion but until you heard so many instances where students are fighting and then the people are getting hurt and all this that the other being involved in martial art actually humbles you it makes you realize you know all that no one is it teaches you discipline it makes you mentally tough it makes you understand that good times are to enjoy and bad times are to endure so you can build yourself into something strong this discipline this resolve comes through martial arts like i said in the beginning you know sun tzu is one of the greatest military generals known to man he has this book um uh, which is really famous All right and Sun Tzu says that you'd rather be a soldier in a garden than a gardener in a war. So all these things they they help they help they, they make you tough they make you realize that your body is not brittle you are strong everyone is. It helps you realize how humble you should be it helps you realize how disciplined you should be. All right see uh, what our practice is whenever we arrange a session we we inform students as well as their parents that there is going to be you know a facebook live session uh, and uh, most of our parents are are bilingual so i want you to give them some tips in urdu because we have to check whether you are equally good at urdu as well <laughs> in regard to i have many tips i don't want to sound like a big guy but i have many tips what what you just ask me a question in regards to what would be applicable and i'll just answer that in urdu how about that ha theek hai but uh, 
Sana, you'll have to check the comment section. If you have any questions in Urdu, you can float it towards uh, Mr. Shweb Jamal. Okay. Yes. And the comments in, are funny. In, in the meanwhile, <laughs> in the meanwhile, I'll. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll request she has to continue with questions related to martial arts. I can go on, yeah. <laughs> of course. This is okay. like the best thing for him. Okay. Keep him so, coming, Chai. Keep him coming. I'll keep on coming. <laughs> okay, so uh, talking, uh, you touched on the subject of all these new gyms that are opening everywhere around the city and they're handing out new belts. And uh, like if you go to a karate gym and you pay the fees for two months, you'll be an orange belt. Like, there won't be a problem. There won't be proper testing, and you can get a black belt, yeah, which is it's, it's a sketch. You know why? Because it's so commercialized. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened with religion as well, uh, and and maybe this is a bad analogy that I'm putting martial arts and religion. There, there's no relation, all right. But even when there's religion involved, people start to materialize things, and it waters religion down. Same way, whenever money becomes the monetary thing, the sole thing, the sole driving force for you or for any person sorting out, things just depend on the money. And how do you make consistent flow? You sell belt. All right, I see these kids in news, a 10 year old kid is a black belt. How can a 10 year old kid be a black exactly. belt? There's no exactly. way, all right? So there are loads of these gyms that are there. They don't have the proper expertise. They don't have the proper knowledge. They are selling stuff. They're not selling you knowledge. They're not selling you wisdom. They're not selling you stuff that will, you're going there to learn. They're selling you these belts, these things that you can put on social media and get clout. So yeah, there's loads of these gyms about, and that's why you need to find the right environment. You need to find the right gym. I mean, over here at my gym, we don't sell belts. You've got to come down here and you've got to earn. That's one thing that is still valid in sports like, um, to some extent, to, in sports like Jiu-Jitsu and Sambo. Because in Sambo, you can't buy a belt. There are no belts in Sambo. You're either an international master of sport or you're not. Um, in Jiu-Jitsu, there are belts and there's grades and depends on the instructor a lot of times now it's becoming more monetary as well, which is why it's so important to find the right people, the right teachers. Sir, uh, there, there is a question in the comment section and I really liked it. It's about girls. Are there any self-defense steps that a girl mm. can learn? Are there any? A million and one. By the way, before I go on, is this meant to be answered in English or Urdu? Urdu may the answer. <laughs> Urdu mein karte hai. Urdu mein. Uh, you're in a challenging mood for me. All right. Well, I will disappoint you because I'm equally well versed in Urdu. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there are many techniques that you can use in your girls. In every way, it depends on the situation. Sorry, I'm... That, that's situation okay. but depends on the situation. Uh, situation but depends on the मैं कभी भी ये नहीं बोलूंगा कि एक लड़की एक दो चीजें सीख के जो है वो जाके कोई भी उसको अ अभी सुनने में तो इतना नहीं आता कि लोग मोबाइल छीनने आते हैं लेकिन अगर कोई खुदा ना खासता आता है मोबाइल छीनने के लिए तो नहीं उसकी गन छीन के उसको वन टू मारो और उसी गन से उसका मोबाइल छीन लो नहीं द बेस्ट थिंग टू डू इज टू क्रिएट अ सिचुएशन वेयर यू आर नॉट इन दैट एनवायरनमेंट तो देयर आर लोड्स ऑफ टेक्निक्स व्हिच I or any of the other martial arts trainers at this gym are, will be more than happy to demonstrate. Uh, but the best thing to do is just kind of uh, not be involved in those situations and try your best that if you do God forbid, get involved in that situation, you know how to defend yourself and leave that environment as quickly and as safely as possible. Okay, because we have the last 20 minutes of conversation and I am, I've been receiving messages on my WhatsApp. People are telling me to keep this conversation bilingual so they could also understand and relate to it. This is why I told you to answer this question in order. Uh, yes, Chess. Chess, do you want to talk about martial arts therapy? So that we can talk about it and it will be our benefit. Say it, say it. No problem. If you have any question, you have to ask a question. I will give you an answer. Yes, 
yes i have a question that uh, uh, how does one know that he needs to go ahead and facilitate from the manual therapy sessions similar to what you provide the facility okay i i your voice was cutting out i think you're asking me what someone needs to do um how someone realizes that they need a therapy session Is, was that your question yes ha ye mera khayal hai yahi sawal hai bilkul yes that's what okay yes so your body has a way of communicating with you when you are in pain or you feel not normal you do an activity that's more painful that a few days back was not painful that's when you give me a call uh, the worst thing someone sometimes people do is wo takleef mein honge aur kahenge nahi bas takleef hai to kya ho gaya bas hai hum log chalte rehte hain hum apna kaam karte rehte hain your body is trying to tell you something is wrong address that problem try to fix it that's like the biggest thing that people have forgotten how to communicate with their bodies people have forgotten how to communicate period you don't even get to, you don't even communicate properly with each other as individuals as human beings but it's worse so I, with your own bodies as well if you feel pain if you feel discomfort if you feel less mobility that you felt a couple of days before get it checked book a session your health matters more than anything else your health matters more than money your health matters more than food a day you're going to go to a movie you're going to watch with your friends kitna percent pain reduce ho jata hai manual therapy se like agar koi alhamdulillah i have had i have had people who have um had a 100% response i have had people who have had a 60% response so it makes you, a big difference it does in one session can you suggest session. some simple exercises like uh, an arthritis patient can hmm. do at home i was um, i was about to ask this question arthritis a lot of so women I, so there, there are loads of things that you could do um but because i need the person in front of me i wouldn't advise something because i need to be physically present there to tell them what to do and what not to do because it bears a lot of because obviously they're already compromised they have an ongoing situation a condition going on and for me to just blindly without seeing them without how they doing him advise something it would be unethical so yeah there are loads of exercises that you could do you could do like you could do wall sits you could do step downs mm-hmm. um you could do half squats there are you could do work on your upper body as well you can even work in a swimming pool you could go in a swimming pool and actually walk in a swimming pool run in a swimming pool because that would alleviate the weight when you're in a pool can... you don't put the same amount of weight on your joints but you create resistance so that builds your muscle strength and that also builds your cardio system but all of these exercises are i i think are meant for young people wall sit wagaira ye sara hamari ammiya kaise 50 60 saal ke to log nahi kar sakte ye sab what is the joints bahut kyun kyun unko aap kyun deprive kar rahe hain unka dil nahi hai mujhe mujhe already stiff already stiff joint or inflammation bahut zyada hai jis tarah maine pehle bola ki ye bahut sari exercises ye depend karti hain main aapko koi aisi exercise advise nahi kar sakta क्योंकि मेरे सामने एक इंडिविजुअल प्रेजेंट नहीं है जब मेरे सामने एक इंडिविजुअल प्रेजेंट होगा तो तब मैं बता सकता हूं कि आप ये कर सकते हैं ये नहीं कर सकते आपकी बॉडी अलाउ कर सकती है नहीं कर सकती आप इस तरह चलें इस तरह बैंड हो इस तरह ये एक्सरसाइज करें इसका ये फॉर्म है मैं अभी कोई चीज बोलूँ और कल को कोई और ऐसी करना शुरू कर दे तो वो वेरी अनएथिकल होगा what to do Book in a, a manual therapy session get in touch with me <laughs> okay okay all right diet help nahi karegi iska matlab hai kya nahi diet nahi help karegi lekin agar hum log knee pain wale lekin baaki cheezon mein diet help zarur help karegi acha yes yes you were saying something जैसे यार नी पेन के टॉपिक को टच करें तो जिस तरह कुछ लोगों को शोल्डर्स के इशू होते हैं कुछ लोगों को नी पेन के इशू होते हैं तो सर्टेन एक्सरसाइज होती हैं जो आपको अवॉइड करनी चाहिए लाइक आई डोंट थिंक पीपल हु हैव नी पेन शुड डू हैवी स्क्वाट्स लाइक आप उसके ऊपर थोड़ा सा एम्फोसाइज कर सकते हैं कि कौन सी कौन सी एक्सरसाइज हैं जो किस पेन में नहीं करनी चाहिए देखें आप कोई भी एक्सरसाइज ले लें भले वो जितनी भी सेफ हो अगर आप उसको अनमोनिटर्ड विदाउट एनी गाइडेंस करें तो आप अर रिस्क है आप किसी भी रिप्यूटेबल जिम में जाएं जिस तरह आप हम हैं यहाँ पे माय जिम पे तो यहाँ पे बहुत सारे क्वालिफाइड ट्रेनर्स हैं 
जो आपको हेल्प करेंगे जो आपको मॉनिटर करेंगे जो आपको बताएंगे कि किस एक्सरसाइज के लिए कौन सा फॉर्म चाहिए ताकि आप इंजरी फ्री रहें और अगर खुदा न खास्ता आपको इंजरी हो गई है तो फिर आप एक सेशन बुक करें या आप सेशन नहीं भी बुक करना चाहते तो आप एक ऐसे ट्रेनर के पास जाएं जो आपको उसके उस हिसाब से गाइड कर सके ताकि वो आपकी बॉडी की जो कैपेबिलिटीज है उसके हिसाब से जो मैंने एग्जांपल दिया था ना वॉल सिक्स का वो मैंने इसीलिए दिया था क्योंकि एज अ जेनेरिक वे मैं ये नहीं बोल रहा कि जिसको भी नी पेन है वो जाके वॉल सिक्स करना शुरू कर दें आपके साथ एक ट्रेनर हो जो आपको असेस करे आपके पास कोई थेरेपिस्ट हो जो आपको देख के बताए कि आप क्या कर सकते हैं क्या नहीं कर सकते लेकिन बहुत सारी एक्सरसाइज है ऐसी जो आप कर सकते हैं नी पेन के साथ अच्छा वी हैव गॉट अ वेरी टेक्निकल क्वेश्चन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन जो मुझे इतना ज्यादा समझ नहीं आ रहा है बट आई एम श्योर कि मिस्टर शुएब जमाल वुड बी एबल टू मेक सेंस ऑफ गूगल गूगल अनुषा सेज आर देयर एनी एविडेंस बेस्ड गाइडलाइंस फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सिंपैथेटिक रिफ्लेक्स रिफ्लेक्स डिस्ट्रॉफी डिस्ट्रॉफी देयर there are some guidelines but i you know it's one of those things that this is we we entering that realm of vagueness every individual is different and i can't give specific advice i feel very uncomfortable giving that because if i say something that is not completely applicable to someone and then i quote get quoted on that it it's just is it doesn't feel right so yeah i can't give generic advice that's it no no problem ye jo manual therapies hai kya ye emotional stress से या वर्क स्ट्रेस से भी रिलीव हो सकते हैं बाय टेकिंग मैनुअल थेरेपीज ओके यो यो वॉइस कंप्लीटली वेंट आई कुड अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन बट आई थिंक यू मेंट दैट क्या वर्क रिलेटेड या इमोशनल रिलेटेड स्ट्रेस या मैनुअल थेरेपी सो अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स आई हैव इन माय एक्सपीरियंस in my experience a lot of times when people are really uh, stressed they develop neck pain and they have tight traps they develop pain through that that leads to neck pain mm. um so yeah there are situations there are uh, times when your work or your personal life related or physical stress or emotional stress can lead to problems that can be fixed by a manual therapy yes all right Yes, Sana. Sana among us, I think she is the most diet-conscious person, and I think she uh, has a lot of questions to ask related to that. She does intermittent fasting, I know, yes. and she she suggested the same to me as well. And oh I, no! Did I touch yes, Sana with intermittent fasting? Yes, <laughs> Sana. Is that why you're upset, Sana? Black coffee. No, no, I'm not upset. at all i want to ask like, is black coffee is effective in terms of what in losing weight in terms of like in losing weight or uh, healthy diet pe i mean black coffee has its advantages um but it, it's not going to significantly lose your weight there is no such you know there is no this there is no magical um ingredient or like a diet that suddenly you start having that and you're going to start losing weight straight away it all depends on calories in and calories out you you burn more and you eat less and you will lose weight it's very simple people just so make it more complicated because it's hard so hey but okay. do you have any question ji yes Sir, uh, you, okay, you, okay. you please. Hello. Uh, yes. The, uh, can you list the do's and don'ts in a workout plan for anyone who has you know, started with the workout schedule and schedule? For anyone of your age or for anyone? Never do too much. Never do. Never do too much. A lot of times, what people would do because they're so excited to achieve their goals. that all the motivation they have that should last a month they finish it in the first week so never do too much that you feel miserable afterwards just do enough that you achieve your caloric deficit and you enjoy the process a lot of times people feel miserable because they push themselves so much and so soon that you that they likely to injure themselves and then not enjoy the process and then then two days later they sore and they like mai kyun gym jaunga itna thaka hu 
पूरा दिन मैं स्कूल में था या पूरा दिन मैं ऑफिस में था अब मैं जिम जाऊं नो कीप योर सेल्फ फोकस कीप योर सेल्फ ड्रिवन बट डू इनफ टू अचीव योर गोल्स नॉट टू मच गो स्लोली स्लोली एंड स्टेडीली एंड कंसिस्टेंटली ऑल राइट बी कंसिस्टेंट I think we have asked Mr. Shubh Damal a lot of questions. Uh, Shesh, before we conclude the session, I would uh, ask you whether you have any more questions to ask him. Shesh. Obviously, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, yes. A long list of questions. That's fine. I'm happy to answer. Shesh, Shesh, your mic is mute. You need to unmute your mic. Okay. Uh, uh, I I've unmuted my mic. So let's start with this. For someone who wants to work on their conditioning and power and speed, what are the drills that you would recommend for conditioning, power, and speed? So, for your conditioning, there is nothing better than sprints. And hill sprints, amazing. Sprinting will help you with your speed as well. It will also develop your engine. Like you're gonna develop your fitness as well. Sprinting is one of the best ways to develop hamstring strength as well. Um, so yeah. All right. So uh, we have got a question from Saad Salman because he is one of my students. I think I should be floating this question towards the guest. So Saad Salman is asking: Any workout plan to become eligible for getting selected in commando? Well. To answer that question, I would need to know what the requirements are for the for the commando program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yes. I mean, there there are so many there are so there there are so many plans that are applicable. We have so many trainers over here. So I'll give you a little bit of backdrop um, about the gym, right? We are so focused on results at my gym that we have this policy when a new member comes in that if you don't achieve results within three months, your membership gets you know it, it just finishes it expires so if you have a task which requires certain goals you find someone who can push you in that way and this place is the best place for that all right uh so uh i think we should but yeah i'm sorry one. i'm sorry for the person because i don't know what the commando program requirements are <laughs> if i knew i would definitely be able to help he left just one sentence question in the comment section and i thought i should be asking you because i uh, myself do not know much about martial arts uh thank you very much mr shweb jamal for finding time for us uh no problem the moment we contacted you you were so generous and uh, you were so interesting in uh, doing this particular session i'm i'm so grateful to you on behalf of our principal and on behalf of uh, the whole comics college thank you very much shares would you no, like no, to say it's, something this um, it's, it's a pleasure everyone everyone at my gym and especially the owner he was really happy that because we promote this lifestyle we want young people and old people and middle aged people and kids everyone to be active we have so many plans we have so many programs that cater to everyone so everyone who at the gym especially me especially the owner at the gym as well we were all very excited to have you guys on on board so we can we can avail this opportunity to promote healthy lifestyle among among the young generation all right thank you very much sir and uh, no, i'm no sure problem. that it's my fellow moderators are equally grateful really to it. you right. thank you so this is where we would like to call it a day uh Yes, so now you can uh, end the broadcast. Chaz, Thank you. Chaz is getting very upset. Chaz, it's okay. You <laughs> can come to the gym and you can ask me all these questions in person. Okay? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Don't and be before so we kind. before we end the session, before we end the session, I'd like to give a shout out to Anusha because she is the only one who complimented me in the comments. Yeah, so. who complimented me? <laughs> <you. laughs> I'm sorry, Hold on. No one complimented me. Where is my comment? There are many people complimenting you. It's it's because of you that we are uh, receiving. All right, Chad, you're my guy. You just copy paste them and send them across. Sad sure. Salman is saying, how can we contact him? I think he's asking about you. Sad, we are going to talk about it uh, tomorrow. Inshallah, once we meet at the campus, I'll let you know as to how you can contact him. Thank you very much, everyone. So this is where we no would problem. like to thank you today. so much. Allah Hafiz. Allah. Allah Hafiz. Take care, guys. Good luck. Godspeed.
فلا 